You cannot look at someone and know if they have the coronavirus. That's what the new scientific data is saying, which could explain why doctors and scientists and public health officials are urging you to wear a mask. Medical Director of Infectious Diseases, Dr. John Bradley from Rady Children's Hospital explains. Dr. Bradley. Yes, Shelly. <laughs> Every time I see you, <clears throat> I, I am excited, A, just because I think you're a gem of a human being and I appreciate uh, factual, truthful information that people need to have in order to be able to protect themselves and their family. Every time I see you, I also slightly get a little bit anxious and nervous because We've been talking for months now, and every time I come here, the information is it, new. It changes, and I'm, and that's that's sort of the reality of coronavirus. As we learn more about it, we we change direction, and what we thought coronavirus would do, uh, and it doesn't do. Oh, okay, we're we're going away from that, or we find stuff that it does. We had no idea we're now having to change direction and, and, and be more conservative in how we protect people who interact with each other. The first thing I want to talk about, Dr. Bradley, are the face coverings. And I ask that because in just in what you were saying about the changes, I still remember to this day having a, a very vivid conversation with my husband where I'm like, well, the public officials are saying, don't wear masks. We don't need masks. What are you talking about, honey? And he said, put a mask on. Fast forward a few weeks and months, <laughs> and now we're being asked to wear them. Yes. And we see the divide and so much in our newscast is about people who are refusing and the fighting that's happening, and I don't wanna wear them. Do we see how, what has changed, and do we see how there is a little bit of confusion in the message of how we can protect ourselves right now? So so yes, absolutely, and 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 there's there's two parts of that question. One is is what is it that a mask can do, and then the other is we've got guidelines for social distancing, and if people don't respect those guidelines, but you have a mask on, you'll still be okay. And but if you don't wear a mask. And Uncle Charlie, who you haven't seen in months, comes over and just wants to hug you. Uh, Uncle Charlie might be contagious. If you have a mask on, you'll probably be protected. So, so what's changed with the masks? Um, we initially believed that surgical masks, and we still believe this, will protect you from getting the virus. Surgical masks are FDA approved. They go through all this testing. There's filtration, multiple layers. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, they fit well. And N95 masks, this is a surgical mask, N95 masks even fit better. You seal the entire area around your nose and mouth and we test them in a chamber to make sure no aerosols get in. So those are, those are the best and those we use for, say, surgeons who are doing aerosol generating procedures. But these masks will protect you. What we didn't know a month or two ago is how well a facial covering might protect you from someone else. And, and the more information we now have, if you wear a facial mask, you are much less likely to be infected if you're around people who are contagious. Because facial coverings are all kinds of materials, uh, thin ones that, that fit really well, uh, uh, porous ones that don't fit, no one can say, yes, all facial coverings do this or do that. But facial coverings in general um, will protect you to some degree. The original reason for putting on the facial coverings, as you remember, is so that if you were contagious, and you didn't even know it, you could protect others by wearing that facial mask. Any, any secretions that could be contagious would likely be trapped in the facial protection. And, and that's been validated time and time again. So those two things, the masks, 
to, to both protect others and to protect you, as well as facial coverings versus masks. Why are we seeing a surge right now? So you know the answer to that, Shally. Uh, and I think it's a social phenomenon where we've been in lockdown for such a long time. People are, are social. We love to get together with, with people. I want to see my grandkids. I, I get it. Um, and as, as the virus, the curve is flattened, the virus stops circulating in the community, and the public health officials begin to let up on all of this restriction, people are thinking we're going to go back to normal. And the bars, uh, the bars were open, and everyone's still supposed to be wearing their masks and distancing, but you've seen all these pictures, you've probably taken a few yourself, where they're not. So what's happening is people think that the virus is gone and they're acting as though the virus is gone and it's not. And when you get exposed to someone, in a, whether it's a barbecue or a bar or wherever you are, you're going to pick up the infection and then you'll spread it. And, and that's what's happened. The highest rate of new infections is in people 20 to 29 years of age. They've outpaced all the other age groups. So what you tell me what the 20 to 29 year olds are doing, that is making them more um, in contact with others to pick up the infection. When we spoke months ago, we were very concerned about surfaces. How long could it live on metal? How long could it live on plastic? It seems like those conversations have taken a back seat. And what I'm hearing more and more is the likelihood of somebody picking up the virus are conversations about, it's about talking, it's about sitting at a table, sitting at a barbecue, uh, and just having a conversation with somebody. So there's much more information about, about picking it up if you're sitting right next to someone. A lot more information and, and situations where we did not think it could be transmitted between someone who's asymptomatic and another person who's also asymptomatic but susceptible. Uh, that's dominating the, the scientific literature at the moment. That's not to say that that secretions on surfaces aren't important. It's that, it's that we now realize there's another huge area of communication of the virus that, that we didn't think was possible or we were minimizing it. And now we recognize that it's actually one of the major ways of spread of the virus, people who are minimally symptomatic. And so everyone's focusing on, on the masks and distancing right now. Since the beginning, the one thing I personally have been concerned about is this asymptomatic spread or this pre-symptomatic. You and I have talked about this so I feel like I can probably get a little medical degree in this because I've learned so much from you and you've it, thoroughly explained it. To this day now, with everything that I hear and I see, it's still the one thing that worries me. Okay. And you, you told me you were worried, and I said, oh, you don't need to worry. If you've got a respiratory virus, you've got symptoms. And I'm here to apologize to you, Shally. I was wrong. This virus can be detected in your nose without you having any symptoms whatsoever. And we believe that, that there's some level of contagiousness. So you were right to worry about asymptomatic people. And I told you, you know, if you're walking out on the street, all these people, no one's coughing or sneezing, you don't have to worry about picking it up from them. I've changed my story with the new data. I think we all have to worry. And if that person who feels well happens to come up to me and I don't have a mask and they don't have a mask and they start talking to me and they're contagious, and PCR positive, even though they feel well, I'm at risk of picking up that infection. So your, what seemed to be paranoia, it wasn't, it's actually wisdom. So Shally, you were right. But that happens in medicine, Dr. Bradley, because you've been in this uh, 
line of work for, for Almost, many yeah, years. Over 40 years. Right? Yeah. So it's okay sometimes to be able to say I'm, I'm wrong or we're learning. That's yes. what we're learning about this virus every day and to be able to adjust to the new information. Right. And, and, and I was waiting for a scientific paper that came out that was very credible to say that people who are tracked over 14 days after exposure and come down with positive tests for the active infection are asymptomatic. Those data just came out a week or two ago. So I was a skeptic, now I'm converted. So uh, uh, I'm learning, the whole scientific community is learning. Uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci didn't believe this could happen. He's, he's learning, we're all learning together. And the recommendations will change as we learn more. What is the one thing that you're most surprised about, Dr. Bradley? I have never seen a virus that causes an infection with no symptoms. And I'm, I am floored. Uh, the, uh, as the virus replicates in tissue, and we can actually measure how much virus is in the swab, so we know if this is just a teeny little infection or a huge infection. These kids who have no symptoms have tons of virus. Uh, that, that completely surprises me. So every time I share any information with, with our, in our training program or with pediatricians in the community, it is, uh, you can't tell who's infected and who's not. And so, we're offering with the county now, uh, it, it, at least through all the children's hospital affiliated clinics, anyone that comes in, kid for well checkup, can get tested for the virus, and it's the swab in the front part of the nose. The, we, we, the tests are better now. You don't need to go all the way back to the throat. Um, and not only can the child who's coming in for the well check get ch tested, any siblings who are there can be tested, and the parents can get tested. So we're doing a snapshot of, of how many children and their families will have the virus, even if they have no symptoms. And our, and our ability, again, to do this is, is, is ramping up. And within a week or two, we'll be able to do 2,000 tests per day. The county is up to over 5,000 tests per day, our San Diego County. Uh, which is phenomenal. And now we're beginning to get a handle on just who's actually infected and how they're spreading it. And now we can trace it and contain it, which is, which is critical to, to making sure it doesn't spread to, to you and your family, your kids, your parents. You've been listening to It Is What It Is with Shali Zomorodi. You can join in and ask your questions live on Shali's Facebook or Instagram page. You can find so much more by following Shali on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and by visiting shaldi.com.